71. I'm your host, Tyler Oltoff, and joined, joined, joining me is Kyle Wakeling. What's up, Kyle? Not a whole lot. Ah, been a long day, kind of. So oh, yeah. glad to finally get here to the podcast and be able to kind of relax and just talk to you for a little bit. You got your coffee. <laughs> That's right. Your got my coffee. Off. No, my pants are on. <laughs> They're stapled to my legs, okay. <laughs> so they cannot be taken off at this time. That sounds very overdone. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be sure. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I'll let you think if I'm wearing pants or not. <laughs> I'll not think about that. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Anyways, how was your weekend? Do anything crazy? Uh, not crazy, I don't think. No? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pre- didn't, pretty sure. You didn't play a game for like ever completely dying over and over and feeling like you spent $60 worth of Canadian money? <laughs> Actually, it was $70 worth of Canadian Ooh. money because those upper tier games are more expensive over here. Stupid dollar. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't really consider that crazy. I've, you know, done worse than that. I've played Ollie Ollie and crashed repeatedly for 10 hours straight. So (laughs) that's true. (laughs) Uh, Well, we're referring to Bloodborne, by the way, but we won't go into that because that's a PS4 game and we're not a PS4 podcast. We're the PlayStation Vita podcast or the Vita cast. Um, So let's jump into what we've been playing on those Vitas. And for me, it's been a little bit of MLB 15, the show kind of getting frustrated because I've been having those problems that I told you. I don't know if I talked about it in the podcast or not. I think I did. Where uh, you'd be running towards the wall and then right as you're about to hit that wall and the ball is about to be a home run and you hit right trigger to jump and grab it, your guy just dives straight into it, breaking his neck. But yeah, I had that happen again and I was just, oh, I was not happy because I was like perfect, like set up to get this ball and was like yes i'm gonna stop it i'm gonna be the hero of the team nope i'm gonna try to kill myself <laughs> so yeah that happened um, not good <laughs> not good at all because it was in the like i like i said i can't remember if i mentioned it last podcast but it was i think you 14- actually did uh you were talking about it whether it was last podcast or not i'm not sure but yeah. i'm pretty sure it was on the podcast well anyways quick recap it's in MLB 14, the show, that problem, and I was hoping that it would be fixed in 15, and it's not, so boo. Anyways, other than that, I actually played an older game, not too old, but a game that I haven't played in a while, Soul Sacrifice Delta. I actually completed a mission today and was enjoying that. Didn't play too much, just did that one mission and was like, yes, mission complete, time to play something else. <laughs> um, but yeah, I played a little bit of Kills on Mercenary, me and you played yesterday and own some people. It was pretty fun. Yeah, that was pretty fun. <laughs> we'll have to do it again and maybe get some r- people that enjoy listening to us talk and getting that lounge play up. <laughs> we really got to get a uh, TVL game going too, like a whole bunch of the guys yeah, that'd get be it fun. recorded and stuff. I think that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> we shall do that hopefully Indeed. someday. Hopefully. <laughs> um, other than that, played a little bit of Child of Light, wanting to kind of complete some of the ge- these games that I just have sitting here, and that would be one of them. Um, didn't play too much, but played a little bit of it. Also jumped into Sword Art Online, Hollow Fragment, and I think I played... No, I didn't play any Minecraft. I thought I did, but I didn't. And I think that's it. Maybe a little bit of Monster Bag? I can't remember. I know I've beaten the game. I can't remember if I beat it la- well, last podcast. The game was just out so yeah i played i beat monster bag and that is a fun game in my opinion (laughs) uh yeah that's about it what about you kyle well um i don't think i played as much as you um (laughs) but i did play some games uh i played some hell divers uh took on some missions solo Uh, i wanted to see how good i was and i can survive level five missions not dying by myself so congratulations yay me (laughs) <laughs> I just spam those exo suits and yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it, what? It's a strategy, okay? Come on. Yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> I also played some Monster Bag. Um, although I think you said you finished it, I'm not finished. Um, I'm only I think level ten or eleven into it, but I'm enjoying it. It's getting a little. 
annoying because of some little things, but um, overall, I'm I'm enjoying it, and I love the art style. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and we played uh, Killzone Mercenary, and I played a little bit of Battle of Z, just oh. kind of screwing around the one day. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I played. <laughs> Very nice. Well, all right, let's jump into those new releases because we don't have any reviews this week. We should have a Monster Bag review up next week. Um, but yeah, slow review week this week, so yeah, just deal with it. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's jump into those new releases. Hey everyone, Tyler here, going to bring you your new releases for April 14th, 2015. Let's jump right into it. For North America, we are getting Best of Arcade Games, Deluxe Edition, Bloxic, Medieval Defenders, and Titan Souls. There's also sales on Eterno Blade for $9.99, which is normally $15.00. And a Draw Slasher bundle, which is normally $6, and now on PlayStation Plus is $1.50. So there you go. There's also a couple PSP sales that you should definitely check out. Um, so let's head on to Europe. Uh, you guys are getting Alien Shooter, Home, a unique horror adventure, Titan Souls, and there is a ton of sales for you guys called the Warner Bros. sales, which is a lot of, I'm pretty sure all of the LEGO games. Um, Batman and Justice, Mortal Kombat, and Spy Hunter. Um, so there you go. If you want to f- see the full list of sales and DLC, head to thevitalounge.net and check it out yourself. Let's head back to the podcast. All right, Kyle. Which one is he going to get? Well, um, I'm not 100% sure about it, but I'm I'm kind of willing to take the chance on Titan Souls. So I think that's going to be one of those games that I pick up in the future. Um, although right now I just don't have the time for it. <laughs> um, I'm kind of addicted to that Bloodborne game. Um, and yeah. uh, there's a couple Vita games that I'm looking to finish. So I guess. hopefully I, I can make room for it soon. Um, but until then, no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, about the same thing for me, but I actually did pick up Titan Souls and I have not played it yet. Um, but right after the podcast, I'm going to jump into it and I'm thinking about doing like some let's play stuff of it because it's what I've, from what I've heard is it's very, it's obviously nowhere near what Bloodborne is, but you've got these bosses that can destroy you in one hit and you're this little dude that has to, you know, (laughs) be smart about how you are attacking it. And since Bloodborne is giving me that crazy boss battle experience (laughs) i'm actually pretty excited to jump into titan souls and see how this one compares and maybe it'll give me a little bit more of a a relaxed feeling somewhat probably not but i'm excited to jump into (laughs) it and see what it does (laughs) yeah what really sold me on the game was uh actually cutting together the april release trailer when i was cutting that together and looking through some titan souls uh footage and Tra- game p- gameplay trailers and different things and cutting them together I was like wow this game was badass for like <laughs> a game that's of this you know um, art style you know some of them you think okay they're going to be really hard but the game looked just completely badass and I was I was taken aback a bit by it um, so yeah I'll be going there <laughs> I think <laughs> well maybe if you want to watch my video you'll be like damn it Tyler I gotta pick this up <laughs> <laughs> I'll only watch the first one, though, because I hate getting spoiled. You know that. That's very, that's very true. That's the problem with these types of games. <laughs> like, when you were fighting that boss in Bloodborne, I was, I think I told you, like, three times, don't tell me anything, don't tell me anything. Yeah, we were talking on, uh, for those who obviously don't know, um, we were talking on voice chat while we were both playing, like, boss battles on our own, and I was, well, I think I was in a boss battle. He was just kind of... I was trying to get around. To it. <laughs> um, and he hadn't been to that boss yet because we kind of got stuck there doing co op. And um, I kind of went in and I was like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> and I'm trying not to like explain what's happening. <laughs> but at the same time, I want to tell him so bad. So it was yeah. just, it was just one of those situations where you're biting your tongue, but at the same time, trying to, you know, <laughs> I'm getting hit, getting hit, <laughs> run <Yeah>. now. <laughs> but now yeah. that we've both seen the boss, and so now after the podcast and when we play later, we can talk all we want about the boss. <laughs> Very so that's true. Good. Anyways. And hopefully kick his ass. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah. <laughs> Again, this is the Vita cast, so let's jump into the news for that Vita. And starting off, we've got a new puzzle game was just announced for the PlayStation Vita. 
and players won't have to wait long to get it, and actually it's already out now, so go pick it up if you're interested, and that would be Bloxic. Uh, in Bloxic, you will twist and turn six different types of cubes to create a match and solve the puzzle. Each puzzle will have a list, at least one in intentional solution, with the possibility for a number of other solutions as well. The goal was to create puzzles that could be tough through and tough? through that just looks weird anyways and didn't have to rely on button mashing or luck gameplay will feature your a mix of touch based controls as well as button presses uh, Justin Kwok from Blot Interactive said that uh, the team was trying to create some new ways to deal with touch controls and I think that you'll find it that it, you'll find that it feels different and is more intuitive than other touch based games in fact one of the our goals with Bloxic was to try to create a game with touch controls that don't suck that's good. <laughs> uh, Bloxic promises to be a challenging head-scratcher of a puzzle that features 100 different puzzles across seven different worlds. Could it be the Dark Souls of puzzle games? It's possible, but we'll let you know once we are able to get our hands on it. Um, so yeah, that is available for $9.99, and it uh, is out now in North America. And there's no word yet on a European launch. Uh, next up... Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition patch version 1.01 has begun rolling out on PlayStation Vita versions of the game, bringing with it a bunch of fixes and minuscule digital footprint. Uh, it's time to kick ass and chew bubblegum once again, and the title's first patch looks to spruce up your experience with some very welcome fixes and changes. The f less than 4.5 megabyte update seems to be rolling out right now, and here's some of the fixes. Uh, fixed Spanish translations of download save game. Fixed beeps when quitting during sign-in dialogue. Fixed icons and leaderboards regarding game clips. Fixed hang when accepting invite when accepting invited inviting while in your own multiplayer lobby. Um, and there's a few other fixes, so feel free to check the post if you're interested in all those, or just go update your game and find out for yourself. Uh, so. So it sounds like some good needed fixes in there, especially with the regards to that multiplayer invite hang, which can be quite annoying. So if you're still down for the Duke, go ahead and pick that up now. Uh, next up, ever wanted to play an array of different sports in space with your favorite Looney Tunes? Well, you're in luck, as Looney Tunes Galactic Sports has been revealed for the PlayStation Vita, and better still, it will be exclusive to everyone's favorite handheld. Developed by Virtual Toys, you'll take part in a variety of zany sports such as space races, galactic archery, and space boxing. The game will be hosted by evil Martian, by the evil Mar Marvin the Martian on and above his home planet Mars. You'll be able to play as your favorite Looney Tune characters with the likes of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Taz, and Wily Coyote, all playable with a load more besides. Uh, as you better your score and gather more EXP, or XP, you will unlock some more characters, each having their own unique set of skills. Uh, you will also be able to purchase gadgets to tilt the odds in your favor by using coins won by competing in each event. Those, of course, will be available from the Acme Corporation store. Multiplayer will also feature in the game, with the Vita's ad hoc featuring being utilizing, utilized. No information has been released regard, regarding possible online multiplayer. No release date was given, but you can expect TVL to bring you all the latest Looney Tunes Galactic Sports information as we get it. That should definitely get online multiplayer if it wants to be anything crazy cool. <laughs> all right, carrying on. Developer Aquaplus certainly has been busy this week, not only confirming the release of Utawarim Rumono, False Mask for PS Vita, PS3, and PS4, but also giving us details on the story and information on premium and first print bonuses. First up, Famitsu has revealed a bit of prologue narration, giving us some insight into the plot and where the game begins, among other things. This is a quote, I believe, from Famitsu. When I came to, I was standing somewhere in the wilderness where the snow was falling. I don't know why I'm in a place like this. Rather, my memory, I can't remember what kind of person I am, or even my name. I stood still shocked at the situation. But, as if to ridicule me, a giant bug-like monster suddenly attacked. I was cornered as I desperately tried to escape. I was in an extremely dangerous situation. But then a girl gallantly appeared. Her name was Kuan, and this beautiful girl with animal-like ears and a tail saved my life." End quote. 
sounds pretty, but we'll have to wait and see if that theme sticks. <laughs> but uh, looking to the reveal of the premium edition, it's set to cost 9,800 yen on release and will include the following. Special illustrated packaging exclusive for the premium edition. An art book containing initial concepts and rough drawings for each character. A mini soundtrack CD featuring music from the game and add-on character DLC codes for four characters from Two Heart 2. They will be for use as a combat unit in-game and are Tamaki Kusaka, Samurai version, Sasara Kusugawa, Samurai version, and then both of those again in Swimsuit version. As for first print bonuses, they'll include the Tamaki Kusaka Samurai version and Sasara Kusugawa Samurai version DLC and will be available digitally for a limited time after release as well. The standard version of the game will cost 6,000 yen and will also include an event application ticket, which Aqua Plus have promised to give us more information on nearer to the release date. Quite a lot to take in, but you can bet that TVL will be on hand to give you all the latest news and updates on False Mask as we head ever near to the September 24th Japanese release date. Moving on, and speaking of Ujawari Mono False Mask, the follow-up was also recently announced by producer Naoa Shimokawa. The Ujawari Mono series was originally planned as a trilogy, and according to the to Naoa Shimokawa, the final phases are already in the initial stages of production. Shimokawa has stated that Utawari Rumono 3, working title, is still a few years away, but he plans to wrap up the Three Kingdoms-esque storyline as best he can. How do you guys feel about the sequels, or sequels of sequels even, being announced months before a game is released? Throw us an email at mediaservices at thebeatlounge.net and let us know for inclusion in the next Vita cast. Uderwari Rumono False Mask is slated for a September arrival in Japan, and there's still no word on when Part 3 will be releasing. A Japanese demo for x Lost Memories has been released on their regional PSN, allowing you to explore a dungeon for memory fragments, experience some of the game's event scenes, and even play a little fun minigame. For the uninitiated, Code Embryo's sequel x Play's Lost Memories has player's guide protagonist Watashi into an alternate reality led by a mysterious character called Nobody, all the time searching for Watashi's younger sister, Omoto. Though the demo is only available in Japan, we can expect the game in the West this summer, so it might be worth a try if you've got the access. And over to you, Tyler. Developer Benjamin Rivers acknowledged it. Excessive regional delay in launching his title home on the European PlayStation blog and confirmed that the game will be available in, available in Europe this week. So tomorrow, I think, or did it, was it last week? Do you remember? Do you know? Your mic's Do muted. I know? <laughs> yeah, I, my <laughs> mic was muted. Um, that's this week. Okay. Well, all right. So look out for that one. Anyways, uh, with cross-buy and a nice 50% discount for those with PlayStation Plus... That's pretty good. Uh, if you're not familiar with Home, it's a horror-themed adventure and you wake up in a dark, dusty house that isn't yours. With a pain in your leg and a desperate need to make sure your wife is okay. Benjamin says the, that Home is a unique experience. There's no inventory, no combat, and no death. It's a narrative-focused game where you get sucked into and just play. He goes on to explain, quote, This is one murder mystery where very key details of the plot and the outcome are entirely up to the player. It's not that the game features simple binary choices and a good ending or a bad ending. It pays attention to you and your decisions. And as you play, the story unfolds according to your actions. What you learn by the end will be far more nonsense... Not nuanced, that's the word, than you might expect. And as with a real mystery, you might not get all the answers, which is why home players often run through the game more than once. Sound interesting? It should be available by the time this podcast hits your ears. Uh, next up, if like us, you have been enviously casting a gaze at other systems as they've received Resident Evil Revelations 2, then this post may be or may not cheer you up. After hearing precise... Uh, a little, precious little, on the, on the development for the Vita version. Joe Garcia from SCEA's third-party productions explained a little more on the PlayStation blog. 
Following the release of the final episode on PlayStation consoles, the entire code is now available to be ported, and that responsibility falls to the talented team at Freema Studio, whose previous Vita work includes Nun Attack and Zombie Tycoon 2. Geo explains in this post, The incredible, passionate team at Freema Studio is knee-deep in production of this title for our favorite little handheld. While we get closer to locking down the PlayStation Vita specific gameplay and features, we will update you all again with a firm release date. But for now, I am just saying coming digitally this summer. End quote. Geo confirms that the PlayStation Vita version of Resident Evil Re Revelations 2 will contain all four episodes of Capcom's Scarefest, including any released DLC minus consumables thus far. As for raid mode, single player will be included at launch, but on online co-op raid mode and the ad hoc mode will most likely come post-launch via an update. This is so they can get the full game into your hands that much sooner. Finally, we they've added gyroscopic targeting to make shooting weapons that much more Vita-centric. Joe goes on to say that he will confirm a more exact date soon. However, there is no news on a retail release at this time, and so we wait. And next up, we finally get the first real details on the battle system in Tokyo Xanadu, thanks to some of those pictures they, that they say a thousand words which Falcom likes to show us, aka screenshots. Uh, first of all, the Soul Device system has been revealed, and the official re details of this are as follows. Soul Devices are special armaments that the qualified, those with ties to the other world, can make manifest. Coming in myriad forms, no two soul devices are alike, specifically made up of a spirit, wait, specially made up of a spirit, particles, and materials from the other world. It's effective, de effective at dealing damage to the creed, as normal physical attacks otherwise do little to them. Following on from that, the basics of combat have also been detailed. Uh, these include normal attacks, shooting attacks, aerial attacks, standard skills, and power skills. Check out the full information on these below. Uh, so combat overview. The most basic of all combat moves, standard attacks, are up close and personal with well-timed button presses and enabling players to pull off attack chains. As each character relies on the soul devices to attack Creed, and each soul device is different in terms of things such as attack speed and range, each character has a distinct feel when controlled. Ko. Ko's soul device is anchor gear, a sword whip, with the blade bladed edge being broken up and split across the length of the weapon. When attacking, its swings come in wide arcs and encircle him, uh, making him effective at hitting enemies from a wide range. Asuka, Asuka's soul device, talks, takes the shape of one-handed sword, its natural focus being the slicing and dicing of enemies. In comparison to Ko's, Asuka's soul device affords her less range, which she more than makes up for with a good amount of power and speed, coupled with a few windows of opportunity to be struck back, making it easier for her to stay on the offensive once she gets going. Uh, Sora's soul device uh, visually resembles something akin to a gauntlet, though her attack range is especially short. She compensates with her sheer speed and relentless barrage of attacks. Uniquely, she's also able to mix in kicks as part of her attack chains as well. Uh, skills, in addition to normal attacks, each character has three types of special skills as they're dis at their disposal that can be that they can dispense during combat, namely shooting skills, aerial skills, and power skills. Each one of these consumes a set amount of SP of the SP gauge, with the gauge itself recharging automatically, allowing players to worry less about conserving SP and more staying on top of the enemy. Uh, so shooting skills are meant to be used as long-distance attacks, shooting and out shooting out energy from a character's soul device and hitting targets from afar. Though weaker than standard attacks in isolation, they can be shot rapid fire to a limit degree to a limited degree, uh, enabling players to maintain a safe distance from the enemy as they fight. Aerial skills are dash attacks that can be executed mid air and are equally effective either as a way of exploding in an opening or for going after Creed that hang around up in the air. Landing an aerial skill or a Creed directly in front of a character can result in multiple hits being dealt in the ensuing attack, racking up lots of damage in a timely manner. The sheer swiftness of aerial attacks also make them ideal as evasive maneuvers when things turn hairy. Power skills are strong special moves that can be triggered by holding down the square button, though they're powerful enough to take out standard Creed in one hit, they have significant wind-up times, providing openings a plenty to get hit if used recklessly. Tokyo Xanadu is set to release 
in Japan later this year, and not, with not even an echo of a potential re- release in the West. Ooh, ah. that sounds ominous. <laughs> Anywho, moving on. Atlas USA have announced that they are bringing Japanese dungeon RPG dungeon travelers to the Royal Library and the Monster Seal to North America this summer, and NIS America have announced that they'll be bringing it to Europe this fall. Originally launching on the PSP in March 2014 in Japan, it was ported to Japanese Vitas in September, but we can now confirm that it will indeed be localized and released in the West soon. The official synopsis for the game is as follows. Quote, The kingdom of Romule is in peril. Monsters are leaking out of every nook and cranny in the land, and to make matters worse, they have started an uprising against humanity. Players take on the role of Freed, an adventurer from the Royal Library sent to stop the uprising. But early in his journey, he discovers a broken shrine along the way. This sets in motion the story of Dungeon Travelers 2, where Freed travels around the kingdom of Romule, and through rescuing, defeating, or bumping into any of the 16 unique girls that can join his party, Freed is on a mission to save the world. End quote. Atlas and NIS America have said very little in regards to what kinds of censorship we'll see in the localized version of the game, but this is a title from developer Aquaplus's Two Heart series, which has been known to feature risque imagery and themes, so it's certainly possible we'll see something get edited. Excited? We'll be sure to keep you updated as this localization develops. Yacht Club Games have given us further details on the PlayStation-exclusive Kratos boss fight that will feature in Shovel Knight. Yacht Club Games decided to add Kratos in Shovel Knight to help celebrate the 10th anniversary of the God of War franchise, as well as the fact that he just seemed to fit in well with the game. Now Yacht Club Games has taken to the PlayStation blog to give us the skinny. Quote, Shovel Knight adventure is tied together with a sprawling overworld map filled with secrets, bonuses, and wandering combatants who are just waiting to take on the blue burrower. Kratos, who is traveling through these lands, is perhaps Shovel Knight's most ferocious opponent yet. However, you can't just run into Kratos by chance. He's very tricky to find. Keep your eye out for secrets, and possibly even double secrets, to learn how to discover this battle. Once you figure it out, he'll appear on the world map. Kratos can be a challenging fight because he's aggressive and tenacious, just like in the God of War games. Using his Blades of Chaos, he really knows how to whip up your poor Shovel Knight around. The battle is amped up, befitting the -the over-the-top nature of God of War. It's thrilling and exciting, blood pumping and challenging. But most of all, it has that fun factor and that humor and levity that you'd expect from Shovel Knight. After all, it's about time Kratos had his 8-bit debut. But there's more than just a battle. Maybe Shovel Knight learns a trick or two from Kratos. But we shared enough for now. We'll have to play the game to find out what. It was truly a pleasure to work with Sony Santa Monica. They're one of the best studios in the world. We've created something truly awesome together and couldn't be more proud to be a part of God of War's amazing history. We hope you all have a ton of fun finding Kratos in Shovel Knight on PS4, PS3, and of course, PS Vita. End quote. That's good news if you think that you can beat Kratos up, as he'll be available for beating in Shovel Knight when it launches on PlayStation Vita next week. The wait is almost over, guys. Oh, boy. And moving to the last bit of news, it's kind of news and kind of not news, Um, but the PlayStation Store top downloads for March 2015 have finally arrived, and I figured we'd go over them as usual. After last month's European absence, come on EU PlayStation blog, pull it together, their charts return, stepping up beside the North American charts and showing us that it's not all about Minecraft anymore. So what's the new number one in March for the two regions? Well, Europe gets Hotline Miami 2, and North America takes advantage of that 99 cent Gravity Rush flash sale to rocket that to the top instead. Looking for the rest of the charted? Well, here they are. North America's top 10 are 
Number one, Gravity Rush. Number two, Dead Nation. Number three, Helldivers. Number four, Hotline Miami 2, wrong number. Number five, Home, a unique horror adventure. Number six, Ereshika Tainted Bloodlines. Number seven, Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment. Number eight, The God of War Collection. Number nine, Tales from Space, Meat and Blobs Attack. And number ten, that Minecraft game. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to Europe, the top 20 is... Number one, Hotline Miami 2, wrong number. Number two, Helldivers. Number three, FIFA 15 Legacy Edition. Number four, Oreshi Katina Bloodlines. Number five, that friggin' Minecraft game. <laughs> number six, Hotline Miami. Number seven, Dead Nation. Number eight, Unit 13. Number nine, Killzone Mercenary. Number 10, Sword Art Online, Hollow Fragment. Number 11, Little Big Planet PS Vita. Number 12, Assassin's Creed 3, Liberation. Number 13, Silent Hill, Book of Memories. Number 14, WRC 4, FIA, World Rally Championship. Number 15, Odd World Stranger's Wrath HD. Number 16, The God of War Collection. Number 17, Freedom Wars. Number 18, Dungeon Hunter Alliance. Number 19, Dragon Ball Z, Battle of Z. And number 20, Fez. So it's easy to see that a lot of those uh, chart toppers and chart makers were influenced by sales, but there's also some new and hanger honors. Um, I'm really proud of how well Hell Divers has done, making it to the top three in both regions. How about you, Tyler? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a great game. <laughs> And Ereshika and Hotline Miami 2 have also both entered the charts in the top 10 in both regions, so awesome to them. Oh yeah, and Minecraft almost got kicked out. That was surprising. <laughs> Damn it, one more spot and it would have been off. Yeah, it would have <sighs> surprised me not seeing it. It surprises me that it's 10, actually. <laughs> it could happen. Now we know it could happen, Tyler. <laughs> Kyle's just really hoping. <laughs> well, all right. That would be it, right, Cal? That's all the news? Absolutely, that is all the news. Well, all right, let's jump into the talking points for this week. As usual, Tyler, we have the announced to release games that we're looking forward to from the week. So, what looks good? Shovel Knight. I'm ready for <laughs> it. I'm spending too much money, and I've been buying like a game every week. It's getting ridiculous. <laughs> At least they aren't $40 games, though. Shovel Knight, you know, is going to be, you know, less than $40, obviously. Yeah, but I bought Bloodborne. Yeah, that, that that's my fault. <laughs> yeah, but at least it's I don't hate it. Just be happy about that. True. I, I peer pressured you into buying it, so I, I feel good that you at least like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what else? Um, do, 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 do. Of course, I'm really excited for um, Resident Evil Revelations 2. Can't wait. I'm ready for it to be in my Vita and be freaking out, hopefully, and killing zombies. <laughs> um, also, I'm not like super excited about it, but I'm interested to learn more about this Looney Tunes game. It sounds unique, and who knows? Maybe I'll grab it. <laughs> but other than that, I don't know. You know all the usual stuff that we talk about by Namco, so I won't read those off. What about you, Kyle? Well, um, yeah, X Plays Lost Memories. Um, I'm I'm really kind of tempted to to go try that Japanese demo, but at the same time, I know I probably can't read the kanji that they're gonna throw at me, so it's just gonna be a waste. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm avoiding that, but I'm really interested in it because of course it's a sequel to x uh Code Embryo and yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, also looking forward to Resident Evil Revelations 2. Um, I've been avoiding it on all other platforms, not looking at anything. I, I'm ready to get it on Vita first and feel it on Vita and just see what it's it's like and i hope uh freema can deliver an awesome awesome version for us they did well with uh their other games but this is kind of different so hopefully they do good <laughs> i have faith they're, they're pretty good over there yeah um yeah so that 
Um, Shovel Knight, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence, but um, after seeing a lot of this recent Kratos stuff, that looks pretty badass. So I think maybe I'm going to wait until it's actually out on Vita, and then maybe look at a couple of like beginning videos and see. But that one's kind of on the fence for me. Um, and Tokyo is Xanadu. That one looks good every time they bring an update. I'm like, just announce it, because <laughs> yeah, it's one of those ones that every time they they you know tell us more, I'm like, oh, it looks looks so much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be one. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely that. Um, I have to look into that uh, Dungeon Travelers too, uh, because I'm not too. Well, first on the game, but anything that says uh, that it's lewd or whatever they word they use there, um, that gets my attention. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there you go. That's all our talking points this week. It is. So we've but, got a ton of yes. them. yeah. <laughs> we got the same mindset, Kyle. We've got a ton of listener mail, so let's jump right into it. You want to take the first one? All right. The first one is from Jack Gull via email, and he says. Do you think Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate will be announced for Vita at E3 2015? Thanks, Jack. Um, no. Would I like it to? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be so happy. Like, even though there's quite a few um, hunting style games on the Vita, Monster Hunter is always that one that all of us Vita owners are just begging for and you know, pulling at the leg of Capcom, like, please put it on our Vitas. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I highly doubt it, but it would, that'd be awesome. What about you, Kyle? Uh, I'm, I'm going to be the guy who says the thing that nobody wants to hear and say that they're not going to say shit about Vita at E3 2015. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that getting announced there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, as for it coming in general, I, I don't see it happening, but um, it, it's one of those things that could happen, but it, it's just so far like gone as far as odds that people don't even want to think about it. <laughs> so yeah, and, and I'm, I'm really not a big Monster Hunter fan. I've, I've played a couple of them and I, I just, like I, I mean, I didn't play for very long or anything, but I, I couldn't really get into it i don't know didn't didn't catch me right away and uh i've got other things to play so i'm not worried <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thanks jack for the the question hopefully we're both wrong and sony surprises us with an hour of talking no, i'm just kidding we do an hour <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes of vita talk <laughs> that's not hell five minutes of vita talk <laughs> yeah. maybe even just like a montage clip of all the games coming and they'll throw in some surprise games. We'll be like, whoa, what was that? Rewind. <laughs> but you never know. Anyways, uh, so yeah, next um, question is from The Cycling Wolf. And they say, given Capcom being in such a tight situation, what do you think of Sony buying Capcom? They could still let Monster Hunter release on Nintendo platforms, but could also bring it to bring it and other titles to the Vita and PS3, PS4. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure that <laughs> that's that's in the cards. <laughs> um Sony buying Capcom, yeah. I don't know. That's that's kind of one of those out of left field kind of things that I wasn't even, you know, kind of trying to wrap my head around or <laughs> imagine. Um do I think it would be awesome if they bought Capcom? Yeah. Um, I'd like to see um, Sony put some money or muscle behind Resident Evil um, and maybe bring it back to what it used to be. Um, because even though it's okay now, I loved the first couple Resident Evil and the remake is fucking awesome. So um, I would love if they did something in the original vein and more of a full game instead of these episodic things that they're they're doing. Yeah. Um, so uh, do I think it would be awesome if they bought Capcom? Yes. Do I think it's in the cards or possible? Uh, maybe, but not likely. Yeah. Yeah, I highly doubt it. Uh, <laughs> if anything, sadly, I think if there's any inkling that Capcom was looking for someone to buy them out, Microsoft would 
hop on that quick and they would have the money to do that so yeah <laughs> but it would be cool because there's a lot of games that Sony I think could make better if they were in charge um, so yeah uh, thanks for the question cycling wolf, uh, the cycling wolf I want to head on to All the next right. one Kyle moving on this next one is from Daniel Lopez v email and he says Hi guys, what do you think changed in Square Enix's way of thinking to make them do a Vita version of Dragon Quest Heroes 2? Keep up the good work. Oh, well, you were mentioning something about, uh, oh god, what was it? Where they had that statement where they're saying that PlayStation Vita is important to them and there's going to be titles coming, right? Right. So yeah, there's their decision. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, basically um, at their shareholders meeting 2014, so this is a while back still, um, uh, almost, I think, 10 months now, um, they talked about a whole bunch of different things that they were going to change and you know move forward with on different strategies. And one of the things that they said, roughly translated, is PS Vita is important, games will be announced in the future. So obviously they've seen that either there's a market there for the games that they have, um, enough people, you know, to, to make things profitable, or they're seeing that the market is just so open with, you know, a lot of people not necessarily looking at Vita the way they look at other consoles. And so they're looking to jump in and, you know, just shovel titles at us and see what we grab a hold of. <laughs> yeah. So either way, um, it's good for us, but um, I'm not really sure 100% what they're thinking, just that they're obviously seeing some sort of um, advantage to testing out the waters of Vita. <laughs> right. Hey, it's all good. More developers, publishers jumping on board is great. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, Thank you, Daniel, for the question. Um, so let's head on to the next one. Um, so let's get into it. Hey, buds, I got a North American code for the Lego movie game with my Vita TV, which I'm still not sure what to do with. And I don't have any interest in playing it, so maybe someone else out there does. So here it is. Get ready, people. F, 6, M, R, D, K, N, Five, three, P, Q, five. There you go. And he says, if you snag the code, tweet me at Cacboy, and that's K A C B O Y. And it's he says it would make him very happy. So he says, great work, guys, Marcus Blackstock. So thank you, Marcus, for the code, and good luck to anyone that's listening. And like he says, tweet him, let him know that you picked up the code from him. And give him a thanks. Yeah, thanks very much, Marcus. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but at least some of you listeners would know that Marcus is a former member of the Beta Lounge staff and still one of our good friends. So that's awesome that he sent us in something to give our readers some joy. <laughs> <laughs> and listeners some joy, of course. Yeah. Well, all right. Thanks again, Marcus. Let's head on to the next one. You want to take it, Kyle? Absolutely. This one's from longtime commenter, question giver, etc. Nonskipo at N O N S C P O on Twitter, and they ask, "What happened to the idea of bringing other podcasters, YouTubers, and developers on the show?" Am I not good enough? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they say other. other. Uh. Man. So even though we're super awesome, I guess they want to hear from other people too. Yeah. Well, I, I'm working on it. Uh, we've <laughs> talked to a developer, and hopefully we'll be able to get them on. Um, and we're, we've always been open. So I mean, if there is a other podcaster out there, another YouTuber out there, developers listening, shoot us an email, uh, media services at the and we'd be happy to get you on the the episode and talk about your your game, your channel. Um, anything Vita related <laughs> yeah I think uh, mainly the reason why we haven't had a lot of people on here um, is just because of timing um, a lot of people are busy with a lot of different things and 
just kind of working everything in just kind of doesn't happen. And a lot of the things that we've kind of looked into getting people on the podcast ended up turning into written interviews and stuff like that, that, you know, even though we got to talk to them, it's not the same as being on the podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll definitely look at some future endeavors and hopefully we can get someone exciting very soon for your listening pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Non Skippo, for the, the feedback. Um, so yeah, next question is from the same individual, and he says, what Nintendo 3DS or NVIDIA Shield game do you think belongs on the PlayStation Vita instead? Kyle? Alright, first of all, NVIDIA Shield has games? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really know a whole lot about the Shield because I don't care to play something like that, so... I couldn't tell you with regards to that which um, games that they have that um, belong on the Vita instead. This is one of those situations where I'm kind of ignorant, um, so sorry. Um, as for the 3DS, um, I think we should have all their San Rancagura stuff. So um, Nintendo's a little too cutesy for boobies, so they can, should give us all their boobies. That's a good thought. <laughs> I never even really thought about that, like how Nintendo's really centered more around children and the younger audience. Not to say that if it, it's have... more family oriented. Yeah. I, I I think it's it's not necessarily younger audience, but family oriented. And boobies don't necessarily have a place in family oriented. So I'm thinking they should just give them to us because yes. we want boobies. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, for me, I I have no idea what's on the Nvidia Shield, so I really don't know. But if there's an awesome game on there, bring it over to the Vita. <laughs> uh, for the Nintendo 3DS, I would the first thing that pops in my mind would be um, that Persona Q game. I'm not really big into the dungeon crawler style, like how they do it, uh, the dungeon first person, whatever. But it's Persona. Give it back to us. <laughs> taking that Nintendo. <laughs> um, and then earlier in the podcast or in the questions part portion talked about Monster Hunter. Wasn't Monster Hunter started on PlayStation? I be believe so. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure there were Monster Hunter titles on early PlayStation systems. Yeah, I, th I believe it started on, but I could be totally wrong. So feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, people. But bring us a real Monster Hunter game please <laughs> uh but yeah that those are the few that i can think of there's there's a lot of games though that uh the 3ds should not have that i can't think of right now but yeah <laughs> i've been saying it for years nintendo should just go software only and just give all the games to playstation that'd be crazy <laughs> <laughs> but that's just my thinking and i know there's probably a whole bunch of haters who are going to email me now <laughs> <sighs> Oh, <laughs> but anyway. All right. That would be all of our questions, right? Unless something else snuck in last I second. I did not see anything last second. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um, I don't see anything either, so... Boom. There we go. All right. Let's uh, go to the next thing here, and that would be... Um, check this out. And What are we going to check out this week, Kyle? All right. Well... In honor of the update, which has fixed some little things, as well as some annoying issues like those invite hangs, um, I'm going to recommend that everyone pick up Duke Nukem 3D Mega 10 Edition if they haven't already. It's $9.99 on the USPSN, and I'm sure it's a comparable price on the European PSN and UK PSN as well. So, you know, cheap, it's Duke, it's awesome, it has co-op, what more can I say? They just fix some stuff. Go get it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's a fun yeah. game. Me and you need to play that more. Like we yes. were into it. And yes, we do. <laughs> we got distracted. There's just so many games, Tyler. It's it's hard to get focused. Yeah. I, like we I, almost I, need to do those that 24 hour marathon thing that we did every like month. once a month <laughs> just to get caught up on games. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. my gosh. That's what okay. So Duke is definitely going to be in the next twenty-four hour stream that we do. <laughs> definitely yes. Because that will be entertaining. Even if there's like no one playing online, you you and I will <laughs> just play co-op together forever. <laughs> definitely, definitely. All right. So yeah, 
like I said, or like Kyle said, go grab that game. It's awesome. Um, so we don't have. Do we have any threads for this? Yeah. See, I didn't look. That's the one thing I forgot. <laughs> well, we, I think we still have that competition for Tearaway, correct? Because yeah, that ends yes, on the that would go again till the end of the month. Yes. Yes. So definitely go check out that thread if you haven't. We mentioned that last week, um, but it's still relevant this week. So I would highly recommend going and entering for that if you haven't played Tearaway because that is a great game. And one that should be bundled with every flippin' PlayStation Vita for now on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and, of course, there's always um, new threads on different games that are being released and or announced. So, if you're looking to talk about your favorite game that's coming out or whatever, there's a thread for that. Yeah, I'm sure there's one up or one going to be going up about Titan Souls and boss battles and figuring out the best way to defeat these things. So, there's there's tons. Tons to discover in the forums. <laughs> Indeed. Well, all right. Well, let's get out of here. We've talked enough. Uh, so you can find everything that we talked about on the Uh We've got a new podcast email, uh, which we've mentioned previously. It is media services at the net. So send in your podcast related emails to there um, for now on. Uh, also, Wait a minute, what am I reading here? Oh, never mind. Anyways, continuing on. Uh, we're all on Twitter, at the Vita Lounge. I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. We are on Facebook. Just search the Vita Lounge. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash loungeplay. We are nearing 1,000 subscribers on there, so go spread the word, share our videos. Kyle's uh, April releases is up. Go ahead and share that. Watch that if you want to see what's coming up later in the month um we also post up lounge plays which hopefully we can get one this weekend i think we're gonna be able to do it yeah Kyle? yeah yeah we should be able to all right hopefully that is not an empty promise <laughs> <laughs> so look out for that um i also post up the podcast on my youtube channel and that youtube channel so feel free to check it out there um also the magazine isn't the magazine releasing next Week? Indeed, indeed. Um, if you are a Patreon um, donator, you should check the Patreon page because early access to the digital version of the magazine is available. However, um, the actual launch is Monday and print copies should be going out anytime. So depending on where you are in the world, it's going to take a little bit, but they should be there soon. All right. So yeah, that's uh, patreon.com slash the Vita Lounge. And are you, you able to go for the next physical one, or is that going to be like restarted? Or something? Do you not know how that's going to work yet? Yep, we've moved on to the second one, so now any pledges would go towards the second. Well, all right. So if you, have, if you want to nab your physical version of the second issue, feel free to jump in there. Or if you just want to get the electronic one early and whatnot, feel free to support us there and help us out with what we're doing. Um, so yeah, uh, also the forum, we mentioned it, the net slash forum, uh, sign up, join the conversation, introduce yourself and just be a part of that community. It's growing. Get excited. <laughs> uh, also we're on iTunes, the Vita cast, look it up, subscribe to us, rate us, let us know how we're doing. And that would be the Vita cast. Kyle's cute. San Ryan Kagura. <laughs> That's the one. Boobies. <laughs>